Welcome everybody to the lowdown on Rider Town with the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders, 98.1 KHAK and 94.1 KRNA. Chad Cooper here with you. It's March 12th. This is a reminder that after tonight we only have three shows remaining, three more lowdowns the rest of the year. The schedule goes like this. We have one next week. That's March 19th. The 26th is an off week. The Riders have a game, I believe, that following day, that Wednesday. And then we're back with two dates in April. So April 2nd, and then the finale is April April 9th. If you haven't signed up yet, you can still drop your name in for that autograph team jersey. We'll give that away at the final show on the 9th. You can drop your name in each and every week. The box is around there in the back, so feel free to do that. Joined up on stage tonight by three players. We're calling this Triple Threat tonight. That's tonight's show. We have Troy Cobran, Ethan Walters, and Jerry Harding. Guys, thanks for making the time and coming on with us. Yeah, thank you. Now, I got the emails from the Billet families, from the housing families. Oh, God. And I have to admit that last week I thought it was the longest one I'd gotten. But this one, on all three of you, long emails, uh, like a lot of stuff. That's not good. <laughs> Usually I have it like split 50-50 with my questions that I ask and then the back end is all the housing families. This year it's more like, or this week it's more like 75-25. It's oh, 25 wow. my stuff, 75 uh, on the okay. housing families. All right, so you guys are ready for this. Do you guys have any fears, any trepidation about some of the stuff that might be coming? A little bit. A I little mean, bit. Yeah, Sean should. Okay, all right. All right, we're going to find out then. So we're going to start off pretty easy tonight with you guys. I want to thank, before we start for sure, I want to thank, as we do every week, the Union Station for having us here at this space. We do it each and every Tuesday night, save a few where the riders have a game on a Wednesday. But for the most part, you can catch us here on Tuesday nights, 5.30, each and every Tuesday at the Union Station. You can also thank Metro Studios for getting us set up here each and every week with the audio and the mics so we all sound good. Rick Boots for taking the photos. Those images usually get posted about a day or two after so you can see what the lowdown looks like in person since this is just a radio broadcast so that helps put some visuals to it. The Rough Riders Booster Club, the Billet, the housing families for giving us all that information. I want to thank them as well. It kind of takes a village to make this show happen each and every week so I want to thank everyone who's involved. Alright guys, so we'll start pretty easy. We'll just have player bios, where you're from, and how you got here with the Rough Riders. I'll start on this end. All right, I'm Troy Coburn. I'm from Hillsborough, New Jersey. Um, I came to main camp in the summer. Uh, I made it to training camp, and then uh, I was sent back to the Connecticut Junior Rangers, and then a month later I was, I was called back. Now, Ethan, how about you? Where are you from, and how you wound up here with the Rough Riders? Uh, from Valencia, California. I uh, played for the Anaheim Junior Ducks last season, and uh, Coach Carlson called me at a camp and made the team out at a camp. And then Jerry, how about you? Where are you from and how you wind up here in Cedar Rapids? Uh, I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. Uh, actually, I, I started the year uh, with the Omaha Lancers. Uh, I got traded here, uh, I want to say it was right around Christmas time. So yeah, I got traded, uh, played a couple games, and then had break and came back. So. Now, I usually ask the guys about their favorite NHL team or how they first got involved in the game of hockey, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit this week. And Jerry, I'll start with you. If you can remember, what was the first hockey game you actually attended, collegiate, pro, or anything else? Can you remember it? Uh, I got to say, I, um, I have two older brothers, and um, it was probably like a high school game. Yeah, like I played for my town high school for two years and kind of like grew up uh, going to the rink and like kind of following them around. So probably it's Canton High School, so probably went to one of those games first. All right, Ethan, how about you? Can you remember uh, the first game you went to? Yeah, it was the uh, L.A. Kings and Ottawa Senators game at the Staples Center. And when I was just my first game, so that's pretty exciting. That's pretty exciting, yeah. Is that what kind of sparked your love for the game of hockey? Uh, I, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Troy, how about you? Uh, yeah, I think for me it was a Devils and a Capitals game, and we are all the way up in the nosebleeds. So. Now, Troy, I'll have to ask. I'll ask Coach for validation next week, but I have to ask you. You're from New Jersey. Yep. Did you and Coach bond over that uh, at all? No, if we've learned anything, it's a coach, you know, he's big. He's got the New Jersey, wears it on his sleeve, kind of. Yeah, no, I don't know. We haven't really talked about it too much. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. All right, I'm going to have to ask him next week. We'll see if you guys can bond over that before the end of the season. Now, um, Ethan, being from California, 
obviously, you know, you're not used to this stuff that yeah. we've gotten this winter. What was this past winter like? I mean, this was even brutal for, pe for people who have lived here for a lot of years. What was it like for you? Yeah, it was my, my first, like, real winter. You know, it's, uh, it's been really cold, but <laughs> uh, I've been liking the snow as, you know, as long as it's been here. So. Now, I have, to, I have to admit, a few of the questions that are coming up in this rapid fire se yeah. section have to do with winter and, you know, like getting used to it on your part. So I'm just giving you kind of a heads up. Yeah. Some of the questions are coming along that line. I think I know what. What might be coming? <laughs> you might, yeah. You got an idea? Yeah. <laughs> now, Jerry, you mentioned it. You came over during the season. That's kind of a rare experience for players. What was the transition like? What's it like to get in with the guys and actually get on this team? Uh, it was great. Um, I think I got a call on like a Thursday, and we had a Friday Saturday Friday Saturday game. So, um, drove like Thursday night. Um, got in. Got in, got some sleep. I actually, uh, I was already friends with uh, Aiden McDonough, who's on the team, so I got to stay at his house. And then, you know, ever since I've been here, like the guys been great. You know, really like accepting. So it was, it wasn't too hard. So. Now, I'll start on this end with Troy. I'll ask you your favorite moment in the game of hockey. Do you have something that sticks out over your years of playing that you think is really elite or kind of stands out in your mind? I don't know. I got, I got three things that kind of stand out. One is probably just making the Rough Riders, you know, becoming a part of the Rough Riders. Uh, two is my first US, USHL win, and uh, all. Also uh, winning a back-to-back -back state championships in uh, high school. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Ethan, how about you? Something that comes to mind? Favorite hockey memory? I don't know. So far, I think it's, like Tori said, making the Rough Riders. It's you know, a big accomplishment, but you know, there's more to, to come. So. And then, Jerry, how about you? Something that sticks out in your mind from the game of hockey? Uh, yeah, just playing the USHL is pretty great. Yeah, won a couple state championships with uh, my U16 and U18 teams back in Boston, so those are pretty cool, but yeah, it's good. All right, now we'll get into the gauntlet questions here in just a couple minutes, but I want to remind everybody first that the Rough Riders have two upcoming games this weekend. They happen to be both at home inside the stable, so that's a great opportunity to get out and catch some games this weekend, both against Team USA. The one on Friday night is a Star Wars May the Forwards be with you. I like that play on words. That's benefiting the Special Olympics of Iowa. And then Team USA again on Saturday. That's fighting ALS night and a post-game jersey auction to follow. So some good events happening, some good games inside the stable. Now guys, with the Star Wars, may the forwards be with you. It's kind of cool. I'll ask you guys, I haven't asked the players yet this season what their favorite theme night is. I know you guys don't get to participate because you're playing and you're in the locker room, but uh, anything that sticks out from some of the promos you've seen, I'll start on your end. I don't know. I thought the like the army, the, like the military one was pretty cool. You know, just everything they do for us. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. How about with you, Ethan? Something that stuck out? Uh, I like the Christmas thing that we had. Yeah. The, those ugly jerseys, their ugly Christmas sweaters were pretty, pretty awesome. That's yeah, pretty good. And then Jerry, how about you? You got anything? Yeah. Like the, uh, the Christmas jerseys were awesome, but uh, the jerseys we're about to wear, I got a little sneak peek, so it was gonna be great too. Yeah. I was gonna ask you guys what your favorite theme jerseys are too, but you've already answered. How about on this end? Do you have yeah, one? I probably like the Christmas ones the best so far, yeah. yeah those the ALS pretty, ones are going to be cool too, though. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Alright, guys, so we're getting in to the questions now about with the housing families, but I'll start with you, Troy, and I'll ask you just who you live with. Tell us about your housing family and what that's been like for you as a player. I live with the Johnsons, uh, Brad and Jenny, and the kids are Brett, Karras, and uh, Marin, and I don't know, just the family is just so good. Like, the circus is so caring and thoughtful, and you know, I just love spending time with all the kids and you know playing knee hockey every night with Brett. <laughs> Ethan, how, how about you? Yeah, I stay with uh, Gary and Ivy Rich, and you know they make like another house, like another family mm -hmm. away from home, I guess. And uh, food every day, every morning, every night, and uh, it's just nice to be around them. And you know, it's just like another family. And then Jerry, how about you? Who do you live with? Uh, I'm with uh, Tom's, uh, Brett, and Janelle, and then uh, their two kids, Abby and uh, Hayden. So now, Troy, I'll start with you with the questions. Now we've talked a lot about nicknames throughout the lowdown this season. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's been nicknames that other players have for other players but sometimes we have like the housing families have a nickname for a guy I heard that yours is Troy Troy yep. is that true yep, that's oh. true <laughs> now I heard that uh, throughout the years you're like one of one of if not the first player to actually have a nickname within the family that's pretty that's a pretty uh, good distinction yeah that's what I, that's what I was told yesterday uh, I don't know I don't know how it started I think I just started calling Breck Brecky and you know, he kind of answered back with Troy Troy so yeah and I heard that that is the 
like the number one that gets used all the time. Oh, yeah, all. all the time, yeah. Yeah. Now, guys, do you have a nickname for Troy other than that, or is that basically what he goes by in the locker room too? Uh, he goes by Cobes. Yeah, it's Cobes. Cobes, yeah. yeah. Playing yeah. off the last name. might have to call him Troy Troy now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys, were you guys aware of the nickname before? No. No, okay. That's a good one. That's a good yeah, we're making discoveries on the low down here. Now, Jerry, I heard that uh, when it comes to Dunkin' Donuts, you've got this obsession. This is what I heard. Is this true? Uh, no, I, just, I get a coffee every morning, but not too crazy. Now, what do you get? What's your order? What coffee? Just straight up? or? You know? No, I, I wish. You know, it'd be kind of cool if I just drink black coffee, but yeah. no. no. I get like a, a medium ice, like caramel, and maybe a milk in there. No, I, I will give your the housing, the billet family credit. They did say that they made the distinction that you just said, just coffee, no donuts. Mm, no, no, no. Just, no just keeping it healthy. Yeah. Coach isn't even here, so I mean, you could say it if I you could, wanted to. I could, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Maybe every, every once in a blue moon. Yeah, just you got to treat yourself every now and then. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Now, Ethan, when we're talking about food kind of here, we're talking about Dunkin' Donuts, but also I heard that there was kind of a Thanksgiving turkey confusion situation. That's all I'll say about it. Can you tell us the story behind that whole situation? Yeah, <laughs> during Thanksgiving or uh, the weekend of the Gary and Ivy told me that they got a 30-pound turkey, and I don't know, just off the thought, I was like, a real one? Like, actually a real one? Like a living turkey? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know where they put that, and you know, I didn't know that it was already, you know, cut and ready to, ready yeah. to eat, so I don't know, they thought it was funny, and I was just... So you were expecting like a live turkey running around well, the backyard, maybe like there's something going on out there. That's what they were like thought I was thinking. Yeah. But, um, I was, I just, it just kind of came out the way I said it. So. Yeah. That sounds like a big turkey too. Yeah. It had it to be a uh, good Thanksgiving. It was. We had a lot of a lot of food there, so it was yeah. really nice. Did you make the leftovers last a long time off that one? Did you have like sandwiches the next day? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, you we made. kept it there and ate a lot of it. Now, Troy, you already mentioned your your billet brother, Breck. Now, I heard that, and you also mentioned the floor hockey, the knee hockey. I heard that you guys have some pretty competitive matches going on. Yeah. In particular, I heard seven, seven count them Stanley Cup championships already been played. <laughs> but the thing I heard that so far you're on the losing end of that. That's what I've heard. Yep. No, it's true. I don't know. It always seems it goes down to the last goal and I score. And he's just got to keep making excuses as to why. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh okay. It goes on, yeah. So now it might even be more heated when you get yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. It usually I, ends in a fight. Too. Yeah, you, you poured some fuel on the fire. Yep. What's the club? Do they all come down to the final goal? Are they all pretty close? Well, sometimes he blows me out, but, you know. Usually they're pretty close. And now, Jerry, as long as we're talking about knee and floor hockey, I heard that there's some smack talking in your house, too, when it comes to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of smack fingers with a stick. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, now, do you guys do the whole Stanley Cup thing where you play it out and kind of put all the storylines to it, or is it uh, a little more simple? Is it simpler than that? It's usually simpler. Usually, like, a three-game series, uh, game to three, and, you know, it's, it's, he'll, he'll win for weeks at a time. I can't beat him, and then I'll win. He's, he's good, so. Now, Ethan, I uh, told you this was coming but driving in snow and ice uh. You're from California <laughs> You're here in Iowa here in the Midwest uh, I heard that um, you know the one of the lessons you learned is you got to have a clear windshield before you get behind the wheel and start driving you want to tell us about what happened I heard that there was an unfortunate incident yeah was, uh, we, had a, we were kind of running a little late to our morning workout and uh, I turned the car on and I thought that you know it was going to defrost pretty quick but it, it, it didn't and I didn't have a, like a scraper so I thought my windshield was going to just wipe off the, the ice but kind of stayed I was like alright I could, I could see so I was driving a little bit down the road it got like 20 feet and buried myself in a snow bank and <laughs> couldn't even open my doors because I was stuck in there. Now I heard that you know this kind of this sounds like a pretty funny story but added to the humor to it I heard that the Billet family they could see out the window and they saw the, the car just in the ditch. Yeah. So they watched it all play out. Yeah, Gary was still home, I, I think, and as, I'm wa as we're walking back home, he, he asked what, what happened and told him it went in, went in the snow, and he looks outside. Oh, there it is right there. Yeah. So did you get it out quick, or was this a whole process to get it uh, out? We got it out later that, later that day. Uh, a few teammates came with their big trucks and helped me pull it out. So That's good. That's yeah. good team-building activity. Yeah. yeah. Now, who were the teammates that helped you out? We uh, might as well give them some pub. Yeah, huh? Chase Hampstead and... I don't know. Yeah, just Chase Hampson was the okay, one Okay, so he came out. Yeah, he helped you out. <laughs> now, Jerry, as long as we're talking about cars and mishaps and whatever, I heard that you had a bit of a rear passenger window problem. This is a story I was told. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I have an older car. Um, our car pulls like me, Andre Bakanov, and uh, Aiden McDonough. And 
I think Trey wanted to like open the window for for some reason. It wasn't his fault, but he opened it and just didn't go back up. And I think it was like it was one of that cold streak, with yeah. minus ten out. So it was great. I drove around with like a um, trash bag over the window. Oh yeah. <laughs> Duct taped it up for like a couple of weeks, and then weird story like it heated up a little bit. Yeah. And uh, something unfroze, and it just went up on. It day. just went up. Now, yeah. see the plot thickens. That it seems that seems pretty reasonable, but the way that your housing family wrote it, it seemed like um, they said, you know, you got to park in the garage then once oh, the yeah. window went down. Yeah. And they said it just conveniently all of a sudden it worked then again. <laughs> you know, once you parked nah, in the garage, like maybe you set them up or something. That's what that's how it sounded. Yeah, it, it could seem like yeah maybe. Yeah maybe. Nah, <laughs> but also, I, it seems like you took it pretty easy. You're not blaming Andre for the window. You kind of took it pretty easy on him. You didn't throw uh, him under the bus or anything about the I, window. I don't know. We kind of gave him a hard time. Me and Aiden kind of gave him a hard time saying it's all his fault, but yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. But it works now, too, so you can't, yeah, you can't yeah, rip yeah. him too hard yeah, on yeah. it. Yeah, not too hard. Now, Ethan, we've talked about pranks in previous shows and whatnot, but I heard that pretty crazy one involving you. You went, you came back in your car completely saran wrapped in the parking lot? Is this true? Well, so I, I room or stay with Liam Walsh, mm -hmm. our captain, and uh, actually we came back from a long road trip. It was like three in the morning, and he had taken us to the rink, and we come back, and his car is just saran wrapped completely. Uh, like, I guess they, like Gary and Ivy said they left like keys hangling, like dangling, or <laughs> yeah. scissors to cut it off, and we didn't see any scissors, so we had to just pull it off one by one. Wow, how long, did, how long did that take? Oh, it took like 15 minutes, and it was freezing cold, snowing outside, hands were frozen, and um, the ceramic was stuck to the car, too, so it was just like, just a pain to <laughs> take it off. And now, do you know for sure who the culprits were? Yes. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Are you going to name them publicly? Um... I should, but uh, you, you we're gonna like. I don't know. We're gonna get get them back. To okay. The, yeah, I was gonna, That was gonna be my follow up question. If yeah. you had a prank in mind, do you have something in mind? You don't have to say it yeah. on air. We were going to me and Liam, um, uh, like about a week ago, but you know, it's kind of trying to find the right time to do it when they're at least expecting it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so it's in the works. All right. All right. Yeah. This is good. So we'll follow this maybe as the shows go on this season. See if you pull it before yeah. the season ends. We'll we'll check back. Troy, I heard that this is complimentary. I heard that you're always on the workout grind. No off days. Workouts all the time. Is this true? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where's the motivation come from? I mean, no off days. Even if it's snowing, cold outside, doesn't matter. You're getting the workouts in. Yeah. Well, first, I kind of just enjoy working out, and also I know it's just gonna help me on the ice, so that's why I do it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I really hope that Coach listens back to this one because it feels like he needs you need to get the respect for this. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah this needs to, he needs to know about this. This needs to be public. Yeah. Now, Jerry, when you come from, you know away from here and you come to the Midwest. Never had sloppy joes? This is a story that I heard. Yeah, never. Never? Now what did you think of them? Love them. Love, love them? Love them. You're yeah. big into them now? Never had, uh, never had chili either. That's what I heard, yeah. Yeah, so, or maybe, maybe I never had sloppy joes. Did I have sloppy joes? I don't even know. So do you have one of the favorites? Do you like chili better than sloppy joes or how does that work? I like chili a lot. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it's like the, kind of like the same thing, so. Now I heard that one of the ways you phrased it, tell me if this is true, is that when you heard about chili, you were like, so wait a minute, is this like a meat soup or what's going on with this? Like that, yeah. was, that was what you were wondering? Yeah, I didn't really understand the whole concept of it, but as soon as I you know, caught my spoon starting, it was pretty good. Right. Yeah. Now, we've heard about any particular chili, like a uh, flavor variation, anything that you like? Uh, no, it was, it's kind of like spicy a little bit. Yeah, I put like cheese in it, sour cream. Kind of. Now, guys, uh, you're both not from the Midwest. Ethan, I'll ask you, have you heard of Sloppy Joe's before? Yeah. That was yeah. You knew what was going on? How about on your end? Yeah, yeah, yeah end? I have. I've never had them. Well, I, I have had them, but I don't, I don't really like them. So. You're, you're not big into them? <laughs> <laughs> now, Jerry also heard, we talked about Dunkin' Donuts. We're talking about Sloppy Joe's, talking about chili. Cold Stone, I heard that was a revelation, too. Oh, my too. God, yeah. Yeah, loving yeah. Cold Stone? Yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. I try not to have it too much, but I, know, I feel like ice cream's not even a cheat meal, so. Right, and if you're not having donuts, you can substitute the ice cream. You yeah, exactly. Yourself that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's your order when you go to Cold Stone? What's the automatic? Uh, I usually just get vanilla. Guys usually give me some uh, some grief about it, but I just get vanilla. Yeah. There you go. There's nothing yeah, wrong with that. Yeah. Just keep it simple. Yeah. Troy, are you are you a Cold Stone fan? Uh, yeah. No, I'm. 
I wouldn't say I'm a fan, but I've been there before and I like it. So I would say I'd probably get like <laughs> cake, cake batter with uh, cookie dough pieces oh, and okay. rainbow sprinkles. You're a little more creative with it. Yeah, you're going pretty. Ethan, how about you? Are you a Cold Stone guy? Yeah, like, there's normally like a banana, like banana ice cream, and my mom always got like bananas and brownies, so that's kind of what I get. That's a good one. How about a uh, favorite housing family meal? I'll just go down the line. Troy, I'll start with you. Uh, spaghetti meatballs. Okay, that's a good one. Ethan? Uh, <laughs> Ivy makes a, uh, a really good like breakfast pizza with like eggs and bacon, which that's really good. That sounds good. Jerry, how about you? Um, I like the pulled pork. Pulled pork sandwich is pretty good. Now, Troy, I have to follow up. When you said spaghetti and meatballs, you got some laughter there from the back of the room. Is there a story behind that or something we need to know? Anything? No, I, no, I don't think so. No, no, you don't I, think so? I'm just pretty uh, plain and like ordinary, so yeah. Okay, but that's a solid pick. Nothing wrong with that. No shame in that. There's no shame in that. Now, uh, Troy, as long as we're talking about food too, we're kind of we have themes tonight. We have you know the knee hockey, but then we're talking about food as well. I heard that you have a designated breakfast spot. You're not moving from it. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I don't know. It's right to the left of the stove. Uh, I always just stand there and eat my breakfast. I don't, I don't like to sit down. So you, so you don't sit. You stand there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I heard that it's the uh, same cereal every day, too. Yep, Cocoa Puffs. It's yep. Cocoa Puffs. All right. <laughs> Ethan, Jerry, do you know about this, like, little yep. peculiar trait that Troy has? He's got to eat the same spot? No, I no. could have guessed that, though, goalie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's the other question, Troy, that's kind of my own question. Being a goalie, how does your mask differentiate from Blake's? Do you guys have different styles? What's that look like? Uh, yeah, I actually just got my new painted mask this week. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's looking pretty good, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, well, he's wear, he wears a CCM one. I wear a Bauer one, so it's a little different shape. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, we both have the Rough Riders logos and stuff, and they're both nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool to be a goalie. You get that extra little, you get the flair on it and whatnot. Well, yeah, no, definitely. That's one of the best parts of it. Best parts of it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, um, Ethan, I heard that we know that you love the food and whatnot, but when you first came with the housing family, I heard that you were taking photos of every meal. And then you're sending them back home to your mom, and you're like, man, this food is delicious. This food is great. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, it only was like a week a week long. But oh, okay. Yeah, Ivy is the chef and makes unbelievable food. And uh, my mom always wants to know what I'm eating, and, you know, if it's, you know, what, what it looks like. And I always told her it, was, it was, looked amazing, so I, I sent her a picture of it. Now, how'd she take that? I heard that there might have been the way the the fact was phrased they said well you know your mom might have been like a little mad like wait a minute is he saying my food's terrible he keeps <laughs> messaging this all the time no she was just like uh just happy you know i was eating <laughs> eating really well that she you know she didn't have to provide for me anymore so okay now troy you, you kind of alluded to this but um i heard that you're a pretty picky eater is that true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are things that maybe your housing family has tried that you're kind of like, nah, just, I'm not doing it. It's, it's no go. I don't know. They've done a pretty good job of not, you know, not trying anything different, really. You know, yeah. Okay. So the keeping it spaghetti and meatballs, what's the rest of the week look like? Uh, do you have any other meals that you're kind of like, you know, I can handle this? Yeah, they, cool make, this? they make steak, chicken, uh, any of that. But I don't like, like, Chinese or, like, uh, I don't know, Mexican or anything really like that. Wow. Ethan, the look on your face was kind of like, what? What is going on? Yeah, I mean, was that surprising? I mean, he's, he said he's plain, so I mean, I could see that, but okay. know, different styles of food that taste good. So. Jerry, is that a little surprised? Did you know this about Troy? He's kind of, he just keeps it down the middle. Uh, I mean, yeah, kind of. You got them always, right? Yeah, but like, I don't get anything like yeah, any big that. toppings or anything like that. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. And now, Jerry, I heard about you. When you score, there's kind of like an added incentive. No dishes for the week when yeah. you score. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. And I heard that um, you've got it pretty well timed. That when it, your week is up, it's like automatic. you got a goal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Now, I also heard, I didn't know whether they were playing with you or not, but I heard there's a distinction that, you know, you, you really only like to score against Madison. In particular, that's what I heard. I heard uh, got some groans from the back on that yeah, one. Don't, don't, don't shoot the messenger. This is just what I was told over the emails. No, yeah, no. Yeah, you yeah. just no. I thought maybe I'll you got had a grudge against Madison or something. I'll, I'll sure. take, I'll take it. Okay, yeah. I mean, you got to take a goal when you can get yeah, it, exactly. Especially if it gets you out of chores or something. Like exactly. That. Yeah. Now, Troy, 
Jerry mentioned it. I heard that, you know, you don't just like Moe's. You're kind of like a household name there. They know you. They know your order. Yep. How'd that all start? Yeah, I just go there before every home game. Uh, that's like my, kind of my pregame meal. So I just walk in and they just start making it. Yeah. So they ride on it. And they know you by name in the whole nine? No, they don't know me by name, but yeah. Do they know that you're a rough rider? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yep. so they got yeah. Yep. Now, how about Ethan, Jerry? You guys have a pregame ritual or meal that you have to have? Ethan, I'll, I'll ask you first. Yeah, I, mean, I just started having, like, rice and chicken. And it's easy, and Liam always gets pasta, so, I don't know, pasta's always there. That sounds good. Now, do you eat it at the house, or you guys go out? Yeah, it's at the house. Ivy makes it every every home game. Jerry, how about you? I just go chicken farm. Uh, Olive Garden's down the street from my house, so I just go there. Oh, okay. I'll come right back. So. All right, so you're all, do you go and just pick it up, or do you? You sit there and eat it. You got a ritual to it? No, I don't sit there by myself and eat it. Usually, <laughs> okay. usually, usually I thought maybe you had like a headspace. You had to get in the no, zone or something. No, I usually bring it home and uh, sit at the kitchen table. So. Okay, now Ethan, maybe in all honesty, you might steal my job because I heard that you're full of questions. Like you always have questions. Uh, it's, it's, Is this true? I mean, Is this overblown, exaggerated? I, <laughs> a lot of people saying true from the back. Yeah, the boys just say talk a lot. Now, what kind of questions? Like, you know, what, what comes out? Just anything that's on the tip of the tongue or on the mind at the time? Yeah, I guess. It's just, you know, anything. <laughs> I was going to ask you what the craziest question you've ever asked is. Like, have you ever said anything to the other players or the housing family where they've given you a look like, what's going on? No, it's nothing like that. It's just like, uh, no, am, am no. I still in college? Am I still in college? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> he like t- like heard it wrong. I guess. <laughs> Now, we will take, we have a few more housing families question, questions left, but I will take a brief break and ask you a couple of hockey questions. Now, Ethan, with you, I heard that you're a UMass commit, is that correct? Yeah. Now, what went into that decision? How did you choose UMass? Oh, when I when I toured it, it was just you know an amazing school, and I love the campus, and just really bonded with the coaching staff, and that's why I ended up choosing UMass. Now, Jerry, on your end, in terms of college commitments, Providence, correct? Yeah. Now, what went into that decision? How'd you decide on the Friars? Uh, you know, same thing as Ethan. Like the tour went really well. Felt really at home there, and it's pretty close to my house actually. Uh, so it's kind of an easy decision. Okay. And then, you know, I just went to Providence about a month or so ago. Did you like the city? Oh, yeah, it's like unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good Italian food. East yeah. Coast vibe to yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. And now, Ethan, you're kind of making the whole nationwide tour. You're coming from California. You're here in Cedar Rapids in the Midwest. Then you're going to go out way out east to UMass. You kind of just, you got the whole country covered. Yeah, it's, it's really hot in California. You know, try something different for a change. Yeah, you're going to just traverse the whole United States. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and now, Troy... We were talking about knee hockey earlier, but in the housing family, I also heard that a lot of hide and seek is going on. Is that correct? Yep, with little Marion, yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, now, is this played both ways? Like, you hide too, and she tries to find you, or how's this work? Yeah, yeah, both ways, yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, now where's the craziest spot that either of you have hidden? Um... I don't know. There's no really crazy spots to hide, but it only seems like Marin. Whenever I try to find her, I go and I know where, like I kind of know where she is. But yeah. I go in there, I say like, you know, where are you, Marin? And she just comes out and tells me where she is. Like, she's like uh, let me find her. <laughs> so it's it's not really a true game hide and seek. No, no. It's just kind of in it for the fun. I was gonna ask, but I guess you kind of already answered. If there had been some crazy situation where you hit for like two hours and you're like. This time I gotta I gotta call yeah, it. Happened, game over. happened one time I was just hiding in the bathroom. They just she just kept walking by and I was standing right there, but she just didn't see me. Now Troy also heard, and this is you know they've housed players. Your Billet family they've housed players for 16 years, and they can say that you're the tidiest, tied for the cleanest player. There's one other player. I'll have to quiz coach next week when he's here and ask him if he knows the other player. But is this true? You kind of pride yourself on the cleanliness. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I don't like to be messy. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Jerry, I heard you kind of nodding. Did you know this about Troy beforehand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even like a stall in the, in the locker room, he keeps it pretty tidy. Yeah. So. Ethan, how about you, Jim? You know yeah, same thing. Jerry says, all clean. Now, has he been a motivation for you two guys with the, in your lockers or even with your housing families? You're like, I got to clean it up. Troy's, you know, he's running laps around me on this one. Uh, <laughs> not really. I mean, uh, just stall wise, but. Yeah, just stall, <laughs> stall wise, you kind of look at it, you're like, all right, I should probably pick this up. But. Okay, now, as long as we're talking about stall, in the locker room. Do you guys have any kind of quirks or traditions or things you have to do before games? I'll start on with you, Troy. Um, I don't know. I'd say I always do like the same warm-up, listen to the same music, just stuff like that. Yeah, take my stick the same way, yeah. Ethan, how about you? Any any quirks, anything that you have to do? 
Uh, just like the same warm up with uh, with the team. That's really it. Jerry, how about you? Anything that you, kind of superstitions or anything you do? Uh, no, nothing crazy. Just like playing sewer with the guys before. And nothing crazy. So. Now, Troy, this will be um, this will be something good that Coach will want to hear too. You know, we're talking about hard working, but your Billet family also said, and this is pretty impressive. This is something to take pride in. They said that you taught their kids a lot about determination, kindness, and just hard work overall. How does that make you feel to know you, you've kind of had that impact, not just with the housing family and on the team, but also on, on some young kids as well? No, it feels really good. You know, that's why that's why you play the game and you know to impact others. So, yeah. now I'll ask. We have a couple questions left, but I'll ask all you guys now since tonight it's not the finale of the lowdown, but it is the finale of another pretty well-known show. And we've had some other writers on who have professed their love passion, if you will, for The Bachelor. So they love The Bachelor. Any of you guys into that show at all? Troy? Oh, not at all. Ethan? No, I haven't watched Jerry? it. Jerry? No, uh, Abby watches it a lot, though. Okay, yeah. so you kind of, it's in the background, kind of, yeah, in the yeah, periphery. Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, then the other question won't apply. I was going to ask you guys if you needed to get home tonight to watch it, because I heard tonight's the big finale. No, uh, you don't worry uh, about yeah, that. Yeah. Do you know of any of the guys on the team who are like, man, I got to get home tonight? Yeah, gotta watch this thing. There's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah. Yeah, we've had them on the show. That'll be. Do you guys? Uh, are you guys like prone to, or do you hear some of the chatter around the Bachelor in the locker room? Is it a team discussion, like some of the guys talking about it? Some. Uh, sometimes I hear it a little. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit here and there. How about uh, since we're talking about TV shows, I usually try to ask the guys favorite show right now that they're streaming or they're watching on TV. Troy, I'll start with you. Uh, it's been out for a while, but The Office. Office, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, not the British one, the American one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ethan, how about you? A show that you're watching right now? Um, you on Netflix. I've heard, yeah, a lot of yeah. players mention that. Jerry, how about you? You got a show? Uh, it's called Peaky Blinders. Yeah. I've watched it like four times over, but okay. it's good stuff. And then uh, we'll wrap up here. Final question. You guys get out in the community quite a bit. The Rough Riders do. Have you had a favorite event, something you've done out in the community that you've said, you know, I really enjoyed this. This was fun. Troy, I'll start on your end. Uh, yeah, a few times. Like the whole team went to those uh, anti-bullying assemblies. So mm -hmm. I thought that, you know, that was really good to just give back to the community and help the kids. So, Ethan, how about you? Yeah, we did uh, floor hockey with like some of the elementary schools, so that was fun. Jerry, you got something that sticks out? Yeah, I mean, Kyle Luft uh, last week, we got to read to a bunch of uh, like three and four year olds. So they were, they were a lot of fun. Pretty funny kids. So Now, before I wrap up and ask you guys if there's anything I missed. Is there a favorite nickname on the team amongst the guys? I'm, I might as well throw this out there. I mean, Troy, we just learned about yours tonight, the guys that gotten acquainted with this, but do you have a favorite nickname on the team from the guys? Um, I don't know. I kind of just like mine. Another one I have is Cobra. I kind of like that one. So. That's a good one. Ethan, you have anything that sticks out? You're kind of smiling at the back of the room there. Yeah, I don't know. I'd uh, not really, really, I don't know. No, no, nothing's coming to mind? <laughs> Jerry, how about you? You got something? Nah, nah. No, nothing, no, no sticking out. All right, now, we had a good long list of things about each of you guys. Is there anything that I didn't unearth? Anything that we need to put out to the public tonight? Troy, anything coming to mind? I don't think so, no. Not about you, not about these other guys, nothing coming to mind? No, not really. Ethan, how about you? Anything that's uh, on the top of, uh, top of the head? No, I, I think you covered it. You covered it about? <laughs> Jerry, how about you? you? have any incriminating information on somebody or something you want to get out here? Ah, uh, no, no. Yeah, okay, pretty. We took it pretty easy on you guys. A few yeah. fun facts, but nothing too bad. Yeah, that was good. BMX. Oh, BMX. Someone yelled out BMX. T Sean, yeah. Yeah, Ethan, tell us about that. What's going on? Yeah, I guess uh, I did BMX growing up and just kind of did that before I did. Yeah, world champion. World champion, they're yelling out. You're being a little humble up here. Is it more uh, to this story? I mean, I, I just won three world championships. Oh, just, just like, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, yeah. Just three. Just three. That's like an instant pass. So, I mean, now it's just hockey, so it's kind of what I look forward to. Well, I was going to ask you, now that you're with hockey, you probably don't ride the bike much, injuries and that sort of thing, you don't want to risk it? Uh, yeah, not too much. Yeah, you can't really risk getting hurt, I guess. You know, there is a, there's a skate, not really a BMX park, but there is a skate park in Cedar Rapids. Do you know that? Uh, like Gary said something about it, but... <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been tempted to go down there and just, like, absolutely just show some kids up? <laughs> like, just come out there with your bike and hustle a few kids, just go, look at this. No, it's, well, it's been really cold and rainy. Yeah. So, you know? <laughs> no, not really. Okay. Well, just keep that in mind, just in case. Yeah. You know, if you're like, when the spring comes and you're feeling like, hey, it's time to show some people up. Yeah. Time to get out to the skate park. Guys, did you know about Ethan's BMX? Jerry, did you know about his history? Yeah, actually, we were going to the game uh, on Saturday, and there was like some BMX on the TV, he was talking about how uh, some some nonsense, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, 
yeah. how by nonsense you mean like the moves, like the tricks and the that type of stuff, yeah, or just yeah. overall? Yeah, talking about the bikes and how they're different from the ones he rode and all that stuff. It's, it's pretty cool, though. I think yeah. Cool did. Troy, did you know about this yeah, before? I heard, someone, heard someone in the locker room talking about it. So. Okay. Well, that's a good way to wrap it up. We kind of un, we undug, we unearthed a fun fact about Ethan, the BMX <laughs> stuff. So I want to thank both Troy, Ethan, and Jerry. For, thanks for making the time for us coming on the lowdown. Yeah, thank hey, you. Thanks for having us. I want to remind everyone that the riders have two games coming up this weekend, and the good news is they are both at home, Team USA, both nights. Friday is Star Wars. May the Fords be with you tonight. That benefits Special Olympics Iowa. And then on Saturday, right back at the stable, 7.05 start, fighting ALS tonight. Jerseys, special jerseys for that. Players kind of talked about it. Post-game jersey auction after the game. So get on out, see the Rough Riders, support them. The audio of this will get it posted this coming weekend. And a reminder that we will have another lowdown. Only three left this year. We'll have another lowdown next Tuesday night, March 19th. Come on out and join us for another lowdown on Ridertown. Thanks, everybody.